The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, how many lessons have been there for us to learn in the Bible? because it is the true revolution of the mind of Christ, not given by the inspiration of men, but God breathed, Theonostos, the inspiration of God. When Morgan Freeman went into search for God by starting to know what is creation, he will never come to know until and unless he believes by faith. In Genesis 1-1, when Lord our God created the heaven and the earth, the KJV trails, it is about created heaven. But the original Hebrew tells in the plural, the heavens and the earth. For which heaven we are waiting to go, whichever time it might be, at our death or prior to that, rapture of the church. This single verse enough is enough to really throw out each and every apologetic study that is happening today. Deism, pantheism, materialism, whichever manner they want to look upon creation, rationalism, empiricism, everything will be washed off by that one single verse. But there are not enough men to know why doctrine has been revealed so clearly for us to understand the truth. Why doctrine has been made known for us to really imply to our lives. The only problem with us is we the believers are not truly loving the word of God. We are not really loving. If we would love, we would be like counted among those believers of Luke 1947 who really were listening to doctrine with such kind of a great care, hanging upon the lips of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to listen very attentively, to look upon it, what is telling, what is not, so that they could perform what he has spoken, they, so that they could grant what he has spoken in their lives and really change. But today when a minister has been telling the word of the Lord, the first thing what the believer has to do is that he has to check whether he is the doctrine of Christ or not. He is from the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher or not. How he can really discern until unless he knows what is the doctrine of Christ. Christianity has been demoralized to the moral standards. The high standards of virtue are no longer in the Christianity today to grow up in the knowledge of epinosis where Christ is indwelling in us a permanent place of lodging in our soul and spirit. They don't want to look upon that catacrio, but rather they want to look upon that which is catacrio for Satan, where it's making its copulation and producing false teachers. That is what it is happening today in our pulpits. When Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was there, he was of God. I came to do my Lord's will, my meat is to do God's will. I labor for the food which perisheth not. I have been born to this end so that I could be a witness for the truth. And the only two things what he has told, give to the Caesar the things of the Caesar. And in the world he told only one more thing, be pure as dove and be sharp as our wisdom as serpent. And following the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, it is no longer he who lives in me. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Until unless he has been crucified, you cannot rise, says Galatians 6.14. Till the crucifixion could happen to you, you will be under legalism or carnality. The trends which ever go, like Christian moral degeneracy or Christian immoral degeneracy that are happening around in your roles in nature. 
because of your area of weakness or your strength, of your weakness you sin, of your strength you overcome it by paying because you create it by your own mind, by your own imaginations, because they are the brainchilds of your own thinking. You look upon legalism, you look upon X, Y, Z because you think God is a briber or God is a beggar who doesn't have money with him. So you bribe him by telling that, I will give this to you, Lord, so you forgive my sins. And so are the pastors of false one who are standing in the pulpits and they're training them up in that manner. But never they will know that my Lord looks upon integrity of truth, doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. Righteousness. Does not he tell in the Old Testament time itself, what are your burnt sacrifices to me? Why do I need them? I hate them, saith our Lord. Can you think you can give the entire world bulls or flocks to my Lord? He is not because he is the one who gives to us everything. Don't ever think that Lord requires some money or is begging some money. That will be done because by the pastor teacher who is standing there. If at all he has the bona fide gift, he will never do it. And if he doesn't have the bona fide gift, he will definitely do it. To trap you, to beg you, to use ministry for money, for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barney, he will definitely do it. Take it granted. Our Lord gave it freely. We need to give it freely. For your survival needs, you may ask the question. Right, you are right. The righteous giving of the people to whom when they listen to the word of the Lord and they grant you, that is performed. That is the righteous giving. Not simply begging them for money. Because many of the time people will lift up their plates to take offerings. But when we come to the book of Ephesians 4.31 Lift up that is evil in you, saith our Lord. But men don't love it. Men don't look upon it. And why do these men, they want to look? They want to say, where is the coaching? Where is the teaching? Where has been learned? For those apostles in Acts, we know chapter 4. They have not learned people, but they are teaching great doctrine. When we come to John chapter 17, verses 14 through 16, we find our Lord and Savior being not taught, but he has been teaching so greatly. So will be the pastor teacher who has been trained by the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher. Not in the schools of men, but in the schools of Christ. Not with the flesh and blood, but with the spirit. Learning in the heaven. Kneeling down for him. And understanding the truth by a right pastor teacher to whomsoever he has been directed to send. Earlier, to whom, before they could live to this earth, to whom our Lord has given that bona fide gift, they will come and train them up. By his teachings, by his tapes, by his writings. And there is nothing that could be required for us to confirm with flesh and blood. To go and say and say, Lord, check me out whether I have this gift. Going to a higher authority and telling that, Lord, check me out whether I have this gift. If you have the gift, do you know what you do? Like Apostle Paul did. He went to Arabia and came back into Damascus and stayed there for three years to learn doctrine. The first thing he never went to confirm or to have his, ha have his hands laid upon by the other apostles. No. To confirm with the flesh and blood. No. Neither of the apostles he went. He knew he had the bona fide gift of apostleship. So he went for preparation, for study, 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 and then he came back. After coming back, he met so and so apostles, he said in Galatians 1. Today, the trends have been totally reversed. They want to say they want to teach them in the doctrine of the schools. What? Legalism, morality. And at the end, they want to say we are, we are appointing him to be the, we are anointing him to be the pastor to the church. And not even taught the original principles of the ice concept, isagogical, categorical, and exegetical of the word. If it is not by the power of the word and the ministry of blood, God, the Holy Spirit to transform you, to renovate you, then there is no word at all. In order to take that word, we need to go for the original language of the scriptures of ice concept. If you don't exegeo my, as our Lord said in John 1.18, you can never know. Never you can know in your life. That's why Morgan Freeman, pastor, we don't know whether if he's a believer in Christ, his pastor should have taught him the true exegesis of Genesis 1.1. But since today men love popularity, fame, and money, by using the name of a ministry. Doctrine is not been taught. And if the people were not so much made up of time to look, 
then they wouldn't have come every day. Why they will come every day? The preacher is preaching doctrine. The preacher is teaching didaskar, doctrine. And they don't want to lose even a single word from his mouth. They want to hang up upon his lips. And when he's preaching, they want to learn doctrine from his mouth. So that to perform, to grant what he has been taught. Today, men love that which is not been taught. Men look to perform that which is not at all worthy from the Bible doctrine. Standards of men have become more than standards of God. Rudiments of men become more than rudiments of God. Traditions of men have become more than traditions of God. And men love this. And our Lord said to those Pharisees and scribes, by your traditions, you have nullified the word of the Lord. Traditions are not, weekly once is the, not the church. Daily preaching, daily once is the church. And that's the true burden of a pastor teacher because there is much to communicate laid down upon our shoulders. We cannot finish it, though you have 1,000 years on this earth. If you go on preaching weekly once, no, solid doctrine has to be taught morning one hour, evening one hour. As according to the day our Lord taught, every day as it came, he was teaching, teaching, teaching. But they're always backed up by Satan like the scribes who have written the word. Or the chief priests who were applicable to them. They wanted to destroy, they wanted to nullify him. But they couldn't because the hearers were very attentively hearing to his doctrine. If they would have come, these people would have nullified them. They waited for a season to come, as Satan was also waiting. So will be the attack upon a pastor teacher who is rightly dividing the word of the Lord, trying to look upon his character, trying to look upon his life, trying to look upon his personal style. So is Satan always trying to look upon his life and emphasizing, see what he is. Apostle Paul was also a great persecutor before he could be in church. After coming to the church, what he was. After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what he became. Let none count. When he confirmed his call, he did not go to meet with other apostles to seek, to look and to seek and to search. He went directly for teaching, for learning the word for three years in, in Damascus, in Arabia. After three years, he graduated. He came now and is teaching, and the people saw it, his teaching, and they glorified Lord. So he's a man on this earth. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the only man who couldn't have that of this all sin nature. He knew what was his purpose. He came to this earth, and he did it. We need to follow the principles of Christ. As Apostle Paul quotes, I follow Christ, you follow me. And that is what even we, when we transform ourselves from the standards of Apostle Paul, then we can look upon the standards of Apostle of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who did, who was a witness for the truth. But today, many men, they fail to test the Lord that whether they have the knowledge of God or not. And God, in return, throws them to the deceivers, untested minds who are reprobates at KJV. And we can clearly understand what are their deeds, envious, jealousy, mental attitude, sins, retaliation, revenge tactics, gossiping, maligning, judging, envy, feeling and taking more greed. All these men, all these attitudes are been now found even in the people who are pastors in the churches. Backbiting, backtalking, all these men are been found, all these characters are been found in our pulpits today. And Lord gives you those men because you have been left to test in your mind what is the knowledge of God, because though the anointing has been given to you, wherewith you should really know at the moment of salvation that anointing has been given, that is the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And now you need to confirm to the reality of the spiritual sacrifices wherewith Lord has chosen to you in First Peter 2, 5 and 9. And you should know what is the doctrine, what is your intention, what is your purpose. That anointing has not been just given to you so that you should know. That anointing should discern in you to tell what is right and what is wrong. 
And how you can know unless you learn the word of the Lord. Until unless you come to the right past teacher who knows what is the truth and is teaching to you. And simply some morons say, I have the anointing, I will read myself the Bible and it will end up in no, ways, no man's land. Neither here nor there. Because such are the teachings of this man in our pulpits today who do not really value the understanding of the word. Why these things have been given? So that we should change, we should come back to the reality of the word. Because our Lord, when he comes, he shall judge with us through the mouth of his sword, two-edged drum fire. And that is nothing but the word of the Lord. If you are not able to meet his standards, what does the word say? And if you are not able to meet it, you are going to lose it. Not your salvation, but your rewards. Not your XYZ trends, but your rewards, the glorification which has to be given to you, the hidden manna, the white stone, and the name written upon you that you're going to lose. Are you not interested to look upon that? You want to say, just I am saved, it is saved. You will be bored to be a peon in the heaven. And that will be for a lifetime, for eons and for eons, not just for one or two days. On this earth, we can be today the poor middle class, or middle class, or upper higher class, or upper higher class. Or high class. We can change to tomorrow tomorrow position from low class to the high class. But in the heaven it's not possible Then once you kaput, when you leave this earth, you have gone. And every day what you have recorded, that will be counted for you and you will be judged according to that day. What you have sowed, according to that you will be judged. And you cannot say, I have done this, I do not know, because the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit has been there constantly given to you, so that you should judge and seek and learn the truth. We cannot say these things. Therefore, you should go, you should absorb, you shall do, and you shall become the man of God, said Ezekiel 11, 20 and 21. When we follow his status, when we follow his judgments, when we follow his teachings, when we look upon the word, when we consider the truth, then only you can be. If not, you can never be, said the Bible doctrine for us. But there will be time as well in Jeremiah 14, 10 and 11, when our Lord says, why I'm not going to answer you all. Because you have not refrained from the ways that you are doing. You are not obeying the status what I have told. And therefore our Lord gives a great warning to Jeremiah to tell, Do not pray for these people. And there are men like that in the past, even they are now, even they will be in the future of the millennium as well, though our Lord rules. But there will be some men who are always faithful, even in the tribulation, like one like 44,000 Jews. As in the churches, there will be men like Antipas who will be faithful witnesses for the truth. But there are men who don't understand this reality. Our Lord will defend them and give them the possession of the land to rule over them. But men don't want to look upon this truth. Because they don't believe the word. Morgan Freeman rather going to the entire world and searching for the creation, what is the truth? Better sit down to a right pastor teacher, believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, know the truth. You shall be set free. What you sow, that you reap. You may think you are great. It may be. But we consider only Bible to be great. His word to be great. And we love to follow what is the truth, not what the men think it is the truth. And as they shall know the truth, the truth shall set them free, saith our law. And the true freedom will come for us to know only when there is true peace. And the true peace will come for us, as our Lord said in John 14, 26 and 27, followed with 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And where there is right teaching of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the remembering of the things which our Lord has told for us, taught us, there is absolute peace. And when we come back to God's care, we have many things to be learned. He is the one who guides us, teaches us, leads us, trains our fingers for great battles, to trample down not only just Satan, like snake, even lions, the worries, even the great temptations like dragons. And not only over here in the angelic conflict, even as well, he will use us mightily. Men may think all this is a drama, it's a concept, it's a story. That is for a foolish one who is in this world, who is wisdom according to his mind. 
But the one who truly believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knows and has a true purpose in the Lord, wherewith he can understand what is the truth. Not by the means of human intellectual exercises of mind, but by the means of the spiritual understanding by the Spirit. The spiritual things are being taught by the Spirit of Holy One. Natural man cannot perceive, nor he can understand that. So dear brother, I'll think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without flesh, without hope, and without eternal life. In our will, telling Lord God the Father, that it live upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us, for very simple, believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great matter should grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the great matter is to carry Satan Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because of diamond from my witnesses, where it has been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the Trinity followed the Bible in our hands, and the number two, our hearers. If there are no hearers, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord, no matter what. However the chips may fall, we don't care. We are here to obey and honor our Lord, to get greater glory, greater praise by executing the protocol plan of God. The three stages of the adult spiritual life, spiritual self or spiritual atonement, and the spiritual maturity. And after being executing in that, getting back to the reality of the word. And apart from that, we don't have anything else to the praise of his glory and his grace. To praise, to honor, and to give glory to his name. Not walking according to the flesh of this world but walking in the spirit of a new law, in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy One, through Jesus Christ our Lord, which has been granted for us graciously, so that our Lord could catacrio, could dwell, and He dwells in us permanently as a residing place. When we learn doctrine more and more as per Ephesians 3.17. Consider all this as we shall continue tomorrow. Father, grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will us in these things and make us a blessing and talent, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.